Hey guys, and welcome back. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be working on a steel um, pole saw. It is a model uh, HT56C by Steel. Um, the customer uh, brought it to me, said it's a carb issue. I um, worked on the carb a little bit, ended up having to replace the carburetor in full with another steel carb and it did not fix the problem. Um, I looked down or I looked at the cylinder through the um, through the uh, the exhaust port and it was carnage, absolute carnage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the saw down for you real quick and show you what I found and then we will uh, look at a uh, rebuild kit and I'll take you through that and we will rebuild the saw. Okay guys, first thing we're gonna do is uh, take off the breather. Torx 27 for everything, except for the nuts that hold the um, intake manifold on. Those are eight millimeter. For that, I'm going to use my Tecton quarter inch drive socket with hand wrench. Hope everybody's doing well. I haven't been on in a long time. If you're watching this, thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Please go ahead and click the like and subscribe. Hit the old bell. Get my videos whenever I do get to post. see much of anything on this side but it's it's okay not much to see here so you can see it. One second. There you go. It has never liked coming off of these posts from the day one. So, it's always been fiddly. So we're gonna set that aside. For now, I'm gonna leave the, the carb on. I'm just wanting to take this off um, so I can get to the muffler and show you what's going on on the inside. So let's zip around here again. screws here. the muffler. Okay. Now, turn on the camera. 
let's see what we can see. Turn on the light. There we go. Can you see all that scoring in there? Let me see if I can get closer. And all that scoring is on that piston. Right there. It is in bad, bad shape. Inside, on the other side of the, the cylinder is smooth, but that piston on the exhaust side is just scored, scored, scored. So, I'm gonna turn off the camera, put it away. I'm gonna take off more of the plastics, the carburetor, and we're gonna take off the, uh, the cylinder. All right, give me a few moments to get set up. I'll be right back. Okay, so next thing we're taking off is the carb. So remove the fuel line. Actually, remove the pressure behind the fuel lines. Get your fuel lines off. Come on, buddy. Cable is off, and we've got the main gasket for the breather housing. One fuel line, main hose, one carb sits over here. Okay. Next thing we need to drop off is this guy. Over here. Right there and right there. Right there. Okay. So now this housing should come off without any issue, but there's always an issue, isn't there? Spark plug, wire. Come on, dude. one. Go through it again. Three, four, five. Oh, Maybe I'm just not trying hard enough. There you go. I wasn't trying hard enough. This extra fuel off of here. Okay. I'll move you over here so you can see. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. We have a breather intake that's all. Set up here goes all on the, uh, it's all for the intake. One, two, three 
these screws there. It just comes up. And then this is your kill wire circuit that allows you to flip the switch and kill the engine. That grounds out the engine. So we'll put all that over there by the cylinder. this off. I'm gonna have to take off the magneto. Or the ignition, I'm sorry, not the magneto. The magnition, the ignition. There goes that. Yeah, there is another screw here for it. Plastics back. Okay. Now, got to figure out how this head is on there. And I think it is screwed up from underneath. So this thing has a little bit of gas in it. Let me get that gas out. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're down to the short block at this point. Gas is out of it. Um, but what I thought I had was screws going through the top, but they're actually coming up through the bottom of the crank, which I was not expecting at all. So I'm gonna unmount the entire short block in order to get this done. So, four more screws. probably going to have to uh, take the throttle assembly off and unhouse it from here as well so I can pull everything out. Let me look at that hardware. So here we get our short block. And these are the screws that hold the cylinder on. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna unscrew these, 
but I don't want to break this seal here on the lower end because I don't want to. I, I don't want to take that off at all. I got a seal for the top. I've got a new uh, cylinder. I've got a new piston, um, but I don't want to take all. I don't want to break it. I don't want to break the lower engine in half. Okay. So let's see what I can do about getting this separated. See if the camera is actually looking any good. You're off. You're way off. Bring you in closer. There we go. far enough we will see I don't think I got them all far enough Yeah, that was my knee hitting the camera base. I'm sorry about that. Okay. All right, so we've got massive scoring. Some scoring all, all in there. That's your intake side. It actually looks good. But the exhaust side is pretty boogered up. Now we will look at the bad news on the cylinder. And you can see there on the piston, I mean, just galled up like crazy on that exhaust side. So, yeah. The, uh, it looked like it had been straight gassed. Not enough oil or something was wrong. I see the piston, or the ring is stuck. So it's not moving at all. So time to get it out of there. That's all there is to it. Next steps. clip in there or on this side and I cannot see it I've got my smallest needle nose here and they're too big I think get a fine flat blade in one second.
hands in the way. I'm sorry, y'all. Sorry, yeah. Uh, keep bumping your head, don't I? My knee is right by the tripod. So. Chain clip. Okay. Let's try to knock this little guy free. With a little gentle persuasion. time. There we go. Yeah, we got it off the cylinder, off the uh, arm. So that is good. Right on. I'm surprised at how light this is. I've, this is the first one of this size that I've ever replaced. Um, and I'm just, I'm shocked at how light the piston is. The, uh, the pin, the wrist pin has some girth and weight to it, but the, the piston itself, just incredibly lightweight to move, you know, the 10,000 RPM or 12,000 RPM that it has to move. It's crazy, crazy to me. All right, let's open up the box and see what we got. Okay, one head gasket. New bolts, new wrist pin. And I bet there is a, yep, there's a new spring in there too, uh, connecting, uh, for the connecting rod.
twelve twenty three forty one one two nine nine is on there. Don't know what the markings mean. We already got the ring ready to go. Beautifully in there. Great end gap, as you would expect from a factory part. And look at that finish. Nice, beautiful finish. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off this gasket material and smooth that out. I'm going to get these screws out of the way. Uh, I'm going to get some two-stroke oil and I'm going to lubricate everything that I'm going to be putting back into place. Um, the two-stroke oil obviously is your assembly lube. You don't want to use necessarily grease because it is a two-stroke engine instead of a four-stroke engine. Um, so two-stroke lube is what you use. It's going to smoke a little bit when it fires up, but that burns off almost instantly um, once it's all back together. Um, gonna pause it, I'm gonna clean off this gasket material and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, got the old gasket material off, got the new gasket material on. Um, ready to play with some new tools that I just bought, which I can't remember where I put them. Right here. So just a couple, a real inexpensive set, because I don't do this a, a lot at all. I just bought a real inexpensive set of, um, cylinder compressors, the ring compressors, and a little stop thing for the connect, connecting arm, connecting around. So it'll hopefully help me reinstall everything the way it needs to be. All right, so the only thing I need to know is which way does this piston go? arrow toward intake, I believe. But let me confirm. Be right back. And that was incorrect. Arrow toward exhaust. Get my pin out. This may be blasphemous, but I'm using uh, Echo two-stroke fuel, two-stroke oil, power blend gold, power blend gold, however they say it. And then I'm using the best applicator that I know of, which is a Q-tip. Okay. Here we go. 
start the show. Damn it. Sorry, didn't mean to cuss on YouTube. But now I gotta clean this up, get all the crap off of it. Reoil it. Take two. Come on, little fella. Find your home. Don't you want to go to your home? I know you want to go to your home. I'm sure there's an easier way to do all this. If you know what it is, tell me in the comments. There we go. That got it. That got it. That most definitely got it. Okay, now yeah, find the tiny, tiny little pin in here. Extract it from the bag. Don't you want to go to your home too? I know my hand's totally in the way. I apologize, guys. I can't, I honestly cannot help. trying to turn it in its groove, trying to get the hook in the groove 
on one side of it and rotate it in to place. And it's fighting me the whole dang way. Just lost it. I have to use the old one. It literally just flung out into God knows where. Even with my thumb holding it over. At least I'm sure that's what happened. She ain't there, boys. She ain't there. It's so fiddly. So bloody fiddly. I stick it right over the head of the old head. Try to get it trued up. Nope. Absolutely not. Not working for me. again fellas this time for posterity's sake You know, this video is going to be 20 minutes long of me just trying to get this wrist pin holder in. 20 minutes. What do you want to bet? What do you want to bet, guys? Huh? Taking bets. Place your bets. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to get it fixed and I'm going to do it off camera because it's just eating up film time. You don't want to watch me struggle. Well, uh, you probably do want to watch me struggle, but I don't want to cuss in front of you. So I'll be right back. Okay. Literally, it took me two more minutes. That was it. I, I shouldn't have stopped the video, but I did. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You guys will be okay. Didn't miss anything. Um, what I'm checking on now is um, adding oil, two-stroke fuel to the piston and the ring, and trying to get everything just really lubed up well. I checked, and this is cotton, and it's going to tell me if I have any sharp edges as well that I might need to uh, gently file down and smooth off. Um, and so far, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now I'm going to do the cylinder head. Here. I'll smooth in there as well. So that is that. Now, intake exhaust. We will gently... On. Yep, I know. Hands in the way. 
hands in the way. You're right. I'm a failure as a cameraman and probably as a small mechanic. I'm just kidding. coming down over that piston. There we go. We get a little persuasion, dental persuasion. It's overkill, but it's gentle. Stuck on the ring, aren't I? Yep, still stuck on the ring. Come on now. Who's your daddy? There you go. Good boy. is let's just get them snug just kiss them down Yes, I did just kiss them down. They're not tight, tight at all yet. So let me go online, get my torque specs. I'll be right back. Okay, back. I've already torqued it down. I'm sorry. I thought I'd push record and I didn't. My apologies. Uh, you didn't miss anything. Torque specs. Find them. Um, we've got... We're going to start putting it back the way we found it. And that is, we're gonna put the um, ignition back on. And this little, um, I guess it's a gap plate. It helps to keep heat away from the cylinder head. Um, is important to have on here. So make sure you're not forgetting that when you put it back together. None of these screw holes have had a screw in them, so they're going in forcefully. Bear with me while I go get a business card.
And today we use the business card of Terrell Fixes All, which is a great YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to him, go ahead and do so now. Absolutely fantastic material. Okay, so what I did was I got the magnets here. The magnets are drawing down on the ignition with the air gap in between. The air gap is being made by the business card. Now that that's all in there, I'm just gonna tighten it up to lock it in place. Just a wee bit more. card. There we go. Terrell fixes all. It really rings true. All right, now I'm going to spin it around, spin it over, and make sure we're not touching. We are not touching. Good. Okay. Next thing is we're going to put it back in its case. So I'm going to move you over here. I'm going to check and see how you're looking. Yeah, right where I need you to be. So we had this little bushing over the sprocket. That little bushing went right into here. There we go. Lock into place like a glove. back where they need to go. And try to reassemble. If I can. clamshell to close a little bit better. Now that things are starting to line up.
wrong screws. Right screws. And once again, just trying to find the hole. There's a joke in there somewhere. Okay, and I'm back. So we've got the handle back in place, engine back in place, We've got the ignition back in place. Let's keep moving on. Uh, get the ignition cutoff wire here. That's in place now. Let's start working on piecing together the intake manifold. And I'm going to switch it up from my impact to a socket wrench because, like I said, these are not tapped threads. There's no tap in this, so I'm, I'm tapping it as I go, and I don't want to break off any of the uh, heads of the bolts. So basically, I just took out my um, um, quarter inch bit. I got a quarter inch socket and put it on my uh, quarter inch ratchet. Sorry for the noises. It's winter, or it's fall, and uh, changing season always makes it a little stuffy in my head, so I apologize.
So let's just review some of the tools that I'm using. Uh, Makita Impact Drill, 18 volt. I've got my Tecton quarter inch socket set that I'm using. Uh, I'm using my, um, I guess this is a eight inch bit, nine inch bit maybe, six inch bit, T27. Specifically got it for steel products alone. Because steel only uses T27 screw heads, Torx heads. And everything that I've taken off so far, except for the eight millimeters for, this, for the uh, carburetor, were in fact T27. So that is that. I think I might be missing one for the engine base gasket. I am not seeing it. I'll come across it. It will show back up somewhere. these up and running. That's the fine thread, that's the wrong, wrong screw. Basically, all I'm trying to do is get the, uh, the handle housing clamped back down and screwed back into place. Is it my bushing?
Be right back, guys. Call from the wife. Okay, guys, I am back. Um, let me get a spark plug puller for this NGK spark plug. And then we will move the housing back onto... Correct. There we go. This NGK plug is perfectly fine. It's not new, but it's in beautiful condition. It runs, it sparks. Actually, no, it is practically new. You can see there. Um, back and over, up. It is, I mean, it's practically new. I didn't clean it, I haven't done anything to this plug. So I think uh, the previous owner straight gassed it pretty quickly after they got it and um, the carnage had already taken place before the plug could really get even hot in all honesty. So for this I'm using my 3 8 inch socket by Cobalt and a 5 8 inch um, socket. It's a uh, spark plug socket and the cobalt is a 90 tooth um, ratchet. It's a very nice set. I picked it up, um, I guess it's been a few years ago now, uh, from, a, um, from a Lowe's hardware. And um, it's, it's done very, very well for me. I've, I, I really, it's been a good tool, um, that cobalt set. I also have open end and box end wrenches uh, by cobalt. Um, that's what I started out with when I, uh, years ago, when I used to work for Lowe's, when I was back in my early or my late teens. Um, I was able to pick up a couple sets of, of wrenches at dirt cheap prices, like less than 20 bucks back then, you know, less than probably 10 bucks back then. Um, complete, no skip, the good sets of wrenches, uh, metric and standard. So, actually I can go ahead and put on the muffler. Muffkin. some anti-seize on that. Like I said, these bolts, um, or these holes for the bolts, have never been tapped. So, a little bit of lubrication isn't a bad thing, even if it is anti-seize. And what does anti-seize whenever you uh, use it? What does it do? It gets everywhere, yep. It is everywhere. All I did was open the bottle. I looked at the bottle and it was everywhere. Switch 
over to my wrench, my socket. That one's good. And that one's good. comes the fight. Don't want to pinch the wires, so I'm routing them beautifully, as beautifully as I can get them. There we go. There we go. She just sat down perfectly. three go on to the recoil assembly. Let's go ahead and get the cart back on. a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to put on is the throttle cable. Good job. Gas line. done. That plugs into that. Okay, now we need the carb gasket. Okay, now we need the cover. Gluten tight. Get 
good and snug. All right, so that's back on. Get you back into place. Get Mr. Filter up in here. Before doing that, let's get the recoil assembly on. Pretty sure it's in there. Yeah. Yep. stripped out at this point. We'll see. We will see. It's got some compression. That's better. All right. Let me get some fuel in her. Fire her up. Give me just a minute. Okay, I'm back. Fuel. Here's the thing about fuel. I have true fuel that I'm using and I'm trying to run out of. Um, after the videos by, um, Terrell Fixes All on his gas experiment, uh, from 
uh, Chicanic and her fuel experiment. Um, going with uh, pump gas with mixing her own uh, oil in it versus true fuel. Um, I'm going to stop using true fuel as soon as I'm done with this. I'm going to go straight moto mix and uh, use moto mix exclusively from now on uh, because it is a, a pure alkylate fuel. Um, no aromatics in it. Uh, it burns ridiculously clean. Um, very very little carbon deposits on the, the engine. In fact, if you have a lot of carbon buildup in your engine, Moto Mix, because it burns so clean and so well, will actually get rid of those carbon deposits over time. Um, so I, I've got to use it because that's what I've got, but I am shaking it. I'm going to make sure that it's mixed. I got, uh, remember, we uh, reassembled everything with two-stroke fuel or two-stroke oil, so it should be properly lubricated um, inside the engine. And let's just get her wet, see what happens. job done. Let me clean up my tools before I try to start this thing up, get everything off the, the pender lift here, and uh, we'll try to fire it off. Give me a second. All right, y'all. Let's see what we can do. Prime it. As one of my uh, fellow mechanics says, prime it for a good time. Ready to start. Yeah, just fired up. That is a pole saw for the whopping cost. I got a little fuel leak here, so I don't think I got the, the fuel hose for the return hooked up. Um, uh, at least not properly. Something's wrong. But um, customer brought me this saw, diagnosed it after working on it, couldn't get it running. Then I bought the inspection camera found the problem was the piston and cylinder. Uh, he ended up paying me for my time, paying me for my parts, and gave me the saw. Because um, he said for him it was nothing but a boat anchor. So I now have a functioning pole saw that I can keep or sell. And uh, to me, that's a beautiful thing. So I am very thankful that um, I got this runner. Uh, cost me all of, um, well, it cost a penny. It, it, it cost a bunch. Uh, well, not a whole lot. The kit, the kit itself didn't cost that much uh, as far as um, what it's, what the top end kit was going to be. Um, and we got it done in, in about, what, two hours at most? with recording, trying to set up the camera and all that jazz. So very happy with uh, the results. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe, okay? Uh, hit the little notification bell and uh, make sure that you get all my new videos. Um, don't forget, idle hands are the devil's playthings. So keep on wrenching. 
We'll talk to you soon. Take care.